this is where we stopped in um, part one um, so picking up from here we are now ready to go on to do uh, actual uh, values uh, examples okay so this is a simple circuit that consists of a diode with a voltage source 8 volts and a resistor 2.2 kilo ohms so this diode is in forward biased because it is in the direction of positive current flow the positive terminal of the voltage source 8 volts is connected to the positive terminal of silicon diode okay so I'll change this to pen a bit okay so silicon diode um, is typically 0 0.7 volts um, there could be some variation in these values but it's close to 0 0.7 volts so if it's not stated in the question um, uh, of, but it's stated that it is a silicon diode so you can assume that it is 0 0.7 volts otherwise if it is stated otherwise then you take the value that is given so in this situation we want to find ID and VD so the first thing that we need to do is we need to decide if the diode will turn on or not so because we said that it is going to be in forward biased and this voltage is enough to overcome 0 0.7 volts because this voltage source is 8 volts so the diode will turn on and VD is 0 0.7 volts now now I'm ready to do KVL okay so if I want to do KVL here okay in this loop okay I'm gonna do a KVL here right so let me change this to laser pointer back okay so doing a loop here KVL is minus 8 plus 0 0.7 minus 8 plus 0 0.7 plus VR is equals to 0 uh, VR is equals to 7.3 volts now if I do an ohms law VR is equals to IDR so VR is uh, 7.3 volts which we found out and 2.2 kilo ohms is the value given so the diode current is 3.32 milliamps next is a situation where this is the same circuit situation where diode is reverse biased okay and we want to determine VD VR and ID um, using Kirchhoff's voltage law just as, as we did before so so now looking at this circuit it is going to be reverse biased so diode, diode will turn off it will be an open circuit the simple model of an ideal model of an ideal diode says that if it is reverse biased replace it with an open circuit so if it is an open circuit knowledge or uh, our knowledge on open circuit says um, ID the current through this uh, open circuit is going to be zero okay so if I do an ohm's law across 2.2 kilo ohm the current will be zero so V is equals to IR would be equals to zero volts now if I do a KVL I get minus 8 plus VD plus VR equals to zero so minus 8 plus VD plus VR which is zero is equal to zero so VD is equals to 8 volts so the voltage across the diode is 8 volts because that is determined by the circuit and uh, the current uh, through it is zero because it is an open circuit okay now take away from here first when analyzing diode in series and parallel connection decide if it is in the current flow direction or not okay whether it is it is in the positive current flow based on the supply that is given and then you decide if it will turn on or not okay once decided you can replace the diode with the model you want and perform circuit analysis which is KCL, KVL, Ohm's law and the rest okay so basic knowledge now before I go on every time the screen turns yellow like this it means that I'm um, doing some recap or revision from previous circuit analysis now before we carry on I just need to um, I'll go back and remind ourselves on what series and parallel connections are all about if I look at the circuit I have R1 R2 R3 R4 R5 R6 R7 and R8 so how many of these resistors are in series with each other and how many of them are in parallel with each other so R1 and R2 are in series the definition of in series is such that at one point the terminal they are connected only the two of them okay so R1 and R2 is connected at this node with only R1 and R2 so it is in series okay R2 and R3 is not in series because at this node there is R2 R3 and R4 so R2 and R3 is no longer in series but R2, R1 and R2 is in series okay R5 and R6 now these two are in parallel because the definition of the parallel connection is such that 
these two terminal uh, devices, R5 and R6, at one end, the terminals are connected. The other end, the terminals are also connected. So R5 and R6 are in parallel, okay? Because both ends are connected. R7 and R8. R7 and R8 are in series because at this point in the middle here, the terminal of R7 is in is connected to terminal of R8 and only terminal of R8. There's no one, no other component that is connected here. So R7 and R8 are in series. R uh, four and R5 they are not in parallel why? because even though at this point here R4 is connected to R5 at this point at the other point here R4 is not connected to R5 because there is R3 in the middle Okay, unless R3 does not exist then you can say R4 is in parallel with R5 but in this connection here R4 and R5 are not in parallel so R5 and R6 are in parallel and you can also say uh, R5, which is parallel to R6, is also parallel to the combination of R7 and R8. Not just R7 or not just R8, but the combination of R7 and R8. Okay, So when these elements are in series, the current is the same. So I1 is equals to I2 because R1 is in series with R2. But I2 is not equals to I3 because R2 is not in series with R3. Okay. Likewise, elements in parallel have the same voltages. Okay. So R5 and R6 are in parallel to each other. Therefore, R V5 and V6 are equal. But R4 and R5 are not in parallel. So V4 and V5 are not necessarily equal. Okay. And uh, the last point just now, we said R5 and R6 are in parallel with each other and is in parallel with R7 and R8 as a combination. So V5 is equals to V6 is equals to the combination of V7 plus V8. Okay, I hope that makes it clear for the uh, knowledge on some basic knowledge for series and parallel connection. Also, another knowledge on uh, more no uh, background knowledge on drawing circuits. Now, sometimes you will see that circuits are drawn like this. V1, R1, R2, they are drawn in a complete circle and it is drawn with the ground here. But sometimes you will find that the circuits are drawn this way. Okay, the top part is like a line here and it is indicated with the voltage plus V1. Now, a lot of the simulators use this kind of uh, um, drawings. Okay, so if I have here V1 and then it goes to R1, which is in series with R2 and goes to ground. Now, this V1 here simply means that this is connected to a voltage that is um, of the value V1 and the other end of V1 is connected to the ground. So, these two drawings are the same. If you're not comfortable in looking at the voltage looking like this, looking at this uh, draw, drawing, this, this layout, you can always convert it before you do KVL and KCL and all that to this drawing. Okay, I usually do, at least for my lectures. Okay. This is another drawing. These two are also equal. Okay, We can draw a drawing like this where it's just a node that is given here and at this node, it is shown to be positive V1. And at this other node, is shown to be negative v2 and then we have r1 d1 and r2 okay so if i were to draw this in this complete uh, layout then i'd have r1 d1 and r2 the same but at this node v1 okay i will replace it with a voltage source that goes to the ground okay v1 and this voltage point here which is uh, labeled uh, v negative V2 and because it's negative I made the um, uh, terminal uh, connected to RB uh, R2 to be negative and then it goes to ground or I can also make positive at the top negative at the bottom but the value here will have to be negative V2 now what happens if we have a node somewhere at along this point and it is labeled so for example Vx here if I were to say that this point if I were to say that this point is Vx, okay, it means that um, this point here is with respect to the ground to be Vx. Okay, so these two circuits is the same, it's just that the drawings are different. Okay, more on adding voltages. Now, if I have um, 
voltage in series okay, of uh, components in series uh, the resultant voltage adds so V out here is V1 plus V2 plus V3 okay I hope that makes sense now another way of drawing it is if I say this is Vx across this voltage uh, across these uh, components let's say this is resistor is 1 volt this is 5 volts I don't know what this device is it's but I know it's 7 volts and I don't know what this device is as well and it's 2 volts so if I want to find Vx I don't have to know what this value what this component is I just need to know what the values are so Vx is going to be equals to 1 volt plus 5 volts plus 7 volts plus 2 volts Okay, because they're in series okay another uh, thing that you need to know as well for adding voltages there is such a thing as voltage at a point okay like, like at this node this voltage at this node is 7 volts and the voltage at this node is 4 volts but there is such a thing as voltage across a device across a component like for example here this VR here is a voltage across okay when you say voltage at a point this 7 volts here is one terminal at seven volt it is with respect to ground so this one here is also four volts with respect to ground but if v you say vr which is the voltage across it will be uh, seven minus four okay so vr is equals to seven volts minus four volts so vr which is the voltage across this resistor is going to be three volts even though the voltage at this node is seven volts with respect to ground and the voltage um, at this node is uh, 4 volts with respect to ground VR is not 7 or 4 VR is the voltage across and that is 7 minus 4 and if I have a multimeter okay a multimeter would have two terminals right so if I take this red terminal and I touch this on 7 and this black terminal goes to ground I will see the value 7 volts here and if I take this red terminal connected to 4 volts while the red black terminal is connected to ground I will see 4 volts here but if I have the red terminal connected to 7 and the black terminal connected to 4 I will see 3 volts here I hope that is clear okay more example series diode configuration example when voltage supply is not enough and what am I talking about here now we're going to talk about when the voltage supply is in the direction of positive current flow it is in forward bias but the value is not enough to overcome the forward voltage so when the bias is in the same direction of diode arrow symbol but not enough to turn it on i.e higher potential is yes it is correct it is to the p side and lower potential it is to the n side to make it forward bias but it is not enough to overcome forward vi voltage now let's find vr so this is our example here okay this is 0 0.5 volts this silicon if it turns on it has to be 0 0.7 volts okay so this positive terminal is connected to 0 0.5 but it's not enough to turn it on so because it is not enough to turn it on okay it is still off it is still at um, um, uh, at open circuit okay it's like a no bias condition so id is equals to 0 milli milliamp because it is an open circuit and because it's zero milliamp if I do um, uh, Ohm's law across the resistor R I will get VR is equals to IR so V is equals to zero times R which is going to be zero volts and if I were to do the total voltage drop here okay if the total voltage drop here is 0 0.5 and the voltage drop here is zero this would be 0 0.5 0 0.5 plus zero is 0 0.5 okay this is the point of the graph where you can see where it's not enough to overcome 0 0.7 volts another example okay this is a question given that the silicon diode forward voltage is given to be 0 0.7 volts now what happens if it is in series with a with a red LD LED with another forward voltage that is 1.8 volts so let's determine VR and ID um, it's not shown here I think this is supposed to be V out okay so let's determine V out and ID okay I've drawn this so this is um, 12 volts this 12 volts here is written is drawn like this okay uh, and I have a silicon uh, diode and my red LED with the 680 ohms all connected together to the ground okay 
Now looking at this circuit, I can decide that this uh, both these diodes will be on because it is forward bias and this value 12 volts is enough to turn on 0 0.7 volts and enough to turn on 1.8 volts. And if I do a KVL at this loop, I will get minus 12 plus 0 0.7 plus 1.8 plus V out is equal to 0 which gives me V out to be equal to 9.5 volts. And if I do an ohm's law across the 680 ohms, V is equal to IR, where I is ID, because all of this is in series. So ID will be the same current that goes through the diodes and the resistor. So V out is equal to ID times 680. So ID is 13.97 milliamps. Okay. Next example, what happens if I have a silicon diode looking at each other like this? One is forward biased and one is reverse biased. Okay, first let's decide for what is simple first so looking at d2 this one here d2 this silicon is reverse bias so it's going to be an open circuit so d2 is reverse bias open circuit once it's an open circuit it means that id is going to be equal to zero okay now d1 here d1 here is in the direction of current flow the voltage is enough to turn it on but ID is already equals to zero because VD2 has already determined ID to be equals to zero. So um, a general um, uh, common sense maybe is that when short circuit is in series with open circuit, short circuit is in series with open circuit, open circuit takes effects because ID is going to be equals to zero. And because ID is equals to zero, okay, because ID is equals to zero at this point, we say VD1, the voltage drop across it is also equals to zero because it's like a no bias condition. So if I look, if I imagine the ID versus VD uh, diode characteristics, it's at this point here. It's like no bias, okay. It's not reverse biased, but it's no bias, okay. So if I do an Ohm's law across 5.6 kilo ohm, so again, because ID is equals to zero, the voltage drop because V out is zero volts. And if I do KVL, Okay, it will be minus 20 plus VD1, which is 0, plus VD2, which is what we're going to want to find out, plus uh, V out, which is equal to 0, is equal to 0. So VD2 is equal to 20 volts. Next example. Okay, here we have 4.7 kilo ohms in series with silicon diode, and then it's connected to 2.2 kilo ohms in series. Um, with one end connected to a 10 volts source and the other end connected to a negative 5 volt source and in this circuit also we uh, there is one node here which is labeled v out at this point okay now we'll have to redraw the circuit right so that's negative 10 here this is negative 5 so because it's negative i have um, drawn it like this again as I said I can draw positive at the top negative at the bottom but the value here will be have to be written as negative 5 so just out of habit I have I, I like the voltage source to be positive value so I have written the negative side sign at the top okay and then um, I have 4.7 kilo ohm in the correct place the silicon diode and the 2.2 kilo ohm and then there is this V out here at this point V out but this point V out is the voltage from this point to the ground so since I have already drawn this circuit so it will be from V out right down to the ground okay so first looking at the circuit I need to decide is the diode on or not so this diode is on VD here is 0 0.7 volts and then I do a KVL okay I do a KVL here now when I do this KVL I know that um, in this KVL, I'm going to have an unknown, which is V1 and V2. But because I know that this is Ohm's law, I can straight away convert V1 and V2 in my head using Ohm's law as well here, so that because I can find ID straight away, so I'm just going to have one unknown here. So it's going to be... Okay, so I'm going to have negative 10 plus ID times 4.7 kilo ohms, which is V1, plus 0 0.7, plus V2, which is 2.2 kilo ohms, minus negative 5 so minus negative 5 is going to be positive 5 okay so i get here id equals to 2.07 milliamp solve for id and then once i know id if i want to find v1 and v2 i'll just apply ohm's law v1 is equals to id times 4.7 k which is equals to 9.735 and v2 is equals to 2.2 k 
times ID which is 4.55 volts. Now next question is what is V out? So V out is the voltage drop across V2 and this 5 volt source here. Now there's two ways of looking at it. One is just by adding these two values but make sure you get the values right or if you're comfortable with KVL I can still do KVL at this loop. It's uh, drawn in yellow here in purple so that you don't get confused with all the notations. So if I do a KVL here, I'm going to fi I'm gonna have plus 5 because I see the positive uh, sign first. Plus 5 minus V2 because I see the negative sign here. Plus 5 minus V2 plus V out is going to be equal to 0. And the value I get is negative 0 0.45 volts. Okay. So it doesn't mean that it's connected below the ground if you want to have a look at it but it's negative 0 0.55 volts because it's the voltage drop across this 5 volt source that is connected in the opposite direction and 2.2 kilo ohm uh, voltage drop okay now let's have a look at more examples but this time in parallel connection so these are just more examples Okay, so now we have this two this circuit with two diodes, two similar silicon diodes with forward voltage 0 0.7 volts, both of them, and they are connected in parallel. So determine V out, I1, which is the current through 0 0.33 kilo ohms, ID1, which is the current through uh, diode 1, and ID2, which is the current through diode 2. So again, I've redrawn the circuit. Okay, and um, you see, it, even if it's in the same layout, I have redrawn the circuit because I want to label things like where I do my KVL, where I do the KCL. Okay, so it's always good to redraw the circuit when you are doing your um, um, answering exam questions. So diodes D1 and D2 here, I have to decide whether it's on or off. Um, it's in the direction, and 10 volts is enough. So I can safely assume that diodes in D1 and D2 are both on, which means VD1 and VD2, which is the voltages across these diodes, are 0 0.7 volts. So V out here is actually the voltage across this diode. So and it's not uh, contradicting each other because this is 0 0.7, which is parallel uh, to this diode as well, which is also 0 0.7. So V out is 0 0.7 volts. Now if I do KVL here. Okay, why am I? Why do I want to do KVL? Because I can see that if I do my KVL here, I know this voltage. I know this voltage. I don't know this voltage, but what I want to know from this uh, loop is I want to know I one. So I straight away convert Ohm's law in my mind here. So I get minus uh, sorry negative ten plus I one times zero point three three kilo ohm plus zero point seven volts is equals to zero. So I one is equals to twenty eight point one eight milliamp. And if I do KCL here. Why am I doing KCL? Because this current I1 is going to split up according to these branches. So I'm going to have I1 is equal to ID1 plus ID2, where ID1 is going to be ID2 because they are similar diodes. Okay, So the currents are going to be equal. And that's going to be I1 divided by 2, um, which is equal to 14.09 milliamps. Next example. Now let's have a look at this example where... Um, uh, this is a polarity detector circuit. So I'm going to describe this uh, this circuit uh, first before we do any calculations so that we understand what this polarity detector is supposed to do. Now red and green LEDs are in parallel in the circuit. Okay. Okay, but different direction um, that in this uh, polarity detector. So the purpose is to detect the direction of power supply connection. Okay. If V supply 8 volts here if it is positive okay it is going to be in the positive direction current flow so the LED, the green led will turn on okay but if this supply is uh, connected in the negative direction so this led if this is going to be negative 8 so instead of this voltage becoming higher potential than this now this ground is going to be at a higher potential than negative 8 so instead of positive direction current flow going that way the positive direction current flow will be going this way it will follow the red um, LED path going to negative 8 so um, this is what the circuit is meant to do if it is positive supply 
uh, the uh, green LED lights up. If it is negative um, supply, the red LED lights up. So given uh, the assumptions that reverse breakdown is 3 volts, okay, now it's saying that both of this is the reverse breakdown is 3 volts and the forward voltage are also both at 2 volts. So this is what's going to happen. With positive supply, the green LED will turn on and locks at 2 volts. Okay, Because this current will go down here once it turns on it will lock the voltage at 2 volts now when it locks the voltage at 2 volts red led which has a reverse breakdown of 3 volts it will not break down uh, at 2 volts because it's been locked at 2 volts okay but with negative supply in the opposite direction okay uh, the red led will turn on Okay, because it's enough to turn on the red LED, but the green LED is going to be reverse biased. But once the red LED turns on, this voltage will also be locked at 2 volts. Okay, And because it's locked at 2 volts, uh, it will not break down green uh, LED because the green LED will only break down at 3 volts. Okay, Now, the question here is, find R to ensure 20 milliamp current. Okay. This is the solution. Find R, this value of the resistance, to make sure that diode, um, the current through the diode is 20 milliamp. So if green LED is on, it locks the voltage drop across green LED at 2 volts. Our, uh, red LED is open circuit. This one is 2 volts. And if I do an Ohm's law here, okay, the voltage across R, VR, is 8 minus 2. Okay, this is 2 volts because the voltage drop across this uh, green LED is 2 volts to the round so this node is at 2 volts 8 minus 2 is 6 volts so if I were to do Ohm's law at this point it's going to be VR is equals to IR which is 8 minus 2 is going to be 6 IR is 20 milliamps times R because the spec says it wants it to be at 20 milliamps so R is going to be 300 amps uh, ohms so if I set uh, the resistor here to be 300 ohms I'm going to have 20 milliamps flowing into the green LED uh, also let's check in the opposite direction if I want 20 milliamps to flow through the red LED, okay, if it flows in the opposite direction, if this is a ground and the voltage drop across the red LED is 2 volts, this point here is going to be negative 2 volts. So if I do a um, voltage across here, VR, okay, VR here positive minus, it's going to be minus 2, uh, sorry, negative 2 minus negative 8, which is going to give me 6 volts positive 6 volts so uh, V is equals to IR IR is going to be 20 milliamps times R and R is going to be 300 ohms I've checked both ways so yes it's okay now I'm, I'm still going to look at this circuit but with a slight twist okay this is just um, an example of a more difficult design exercise okay slightly more difficult so how do we design the polarity detector if instead if let's say I want to use a blue LED instead of a green LED and this blue LED the problem is that the issue is that the blue LED forward voltage is given to be 5 volts not 2 volts okay so what's the problem now if this is going to be 5 volts Okay, remember that the red LED reverse breakdown is 3 volts. Now, if the voltage um, from this um, uh, current flow here, um, the voltage of the diode will start to rise from 0 up to uh, 5 volts. But once it reaches 3 volts, okay, because these two um, diodes are in parallel, once it reaches 3 volts here, uh, this diode, will, the red LED will break down. And... Uh, this will cause the red LED to break down and lock the voltage at 3 volts. Once it's locked at 3 volts, this blue LED will not turn on. Because this blue LED, it needs 5 volts to turn on. This red LED, it needs 3 volts to break down in reverse bias. So how do we modify the circuit such that it will allow the blue LED to work with the red LED? Okay, Such that it can reach 5 volts without causing the red LED to break down. Why does the red LED break down at 3 volts? Because that's what the specification says. That is the behavior of the red LED that you have in your hands. And you cannot actually change that, that behavior because once you have that component, um, you have to work within the component's um, uh, specification. Okay, If you can choose, then that would be different. That would be something else.
Alright, now solution. Now with the knowledge that standard silicon diode, silicon diode ha um, has a turn on voltage at 0.7 volts and a breakdown voltage typically at 20 volts. Now if you have the sil silicon diode in series with the red LED, okay, and the silicon diode is also in series with the blue LED, now what you're going to have is that, okay, um, when this one rises up to 5.7 volts, okay, it will cause this side to not break down because for this to break down, it's not 3 volts. For this side to break down, it requires 20 plus 3, which is 23 volts. But once it reaches 5 volts, okay, 5.7 volts because you have two, the silicon and uh, blue here LED in series, um, it will lock at 5.7 volts and it will never reach to uh, 23 volts. Eh. Uh, sorry, uh, 20, what am I talking about? This is uh, 3 volts and this is 20, yeah, 23 volts of a breakdown voltage. Okay, so, um, and that is one of the solutions to do it. And to maintain the 20 milliamps, you can uh, fix the resistor, whatever resistor that you want, in series with each path separately so that you can calculate as to what each of the diode needs for the current to flow. Okay, so I'm not going to do the actual um, uh, calculation here. I'm just um, describing a design uh, approach to this kind of circuits. Okay, so here's another example. Okay, now consider the case when two diodes are in parallel, silicon diode and a green LED. What happens if we have this in, uh, in this connection? Okay, with both arranged in the direction of current flow, but has a different forward voltages. We cannot have both to be uh, on if this one is 0 0.7, this one is 2.2, .2 because they are in parallel. If they are in par parallel, they have to be at the same voltage. So whose uh, voltage will win? Which diode will turn on first? So the quest the answer is the lower voltage locks the value first. So if green LED needs 2.2 volts, but silicon only needs 0 0.7 vo uh, volts, silicon diode will turn on at 0 0.7 volts and it will lock it at 0 0.7 volts and green will also have 0 0.7 volts, meaning that the green LED will not turn on because at 0 0.7 volts, it is like no bias condition for the green LED because it's not enough to reach the fault voltage. So um, lower voltage locks the value first and V out, V out here, Okay, can be found from the voltage um, across the diode here, which is 12. Okay, because you know that this is good, going to be 0 0.7. Okay, it's going to turn on at 0 0.7. So, it's going to be 12 minus V out is equals to 0 0.7. Okay, so V out is going to be 11.3 volts. And again to give you a better explanation like this if you have um, a, a two a termin terminal a multimeter like this you take the red uh, terminal here at the uh, at connected V out and the black um, terminal to ground you will see that V out is equals to 11.3 in the display here but instead if you have this red LED at 12 volts and the black uh, led at uh, V out, the uh, terminal at uh, V out here at this point here, you're going to have, you're going to see 0 0.7 volts here. Okay, I think this is the last example. Okay, series parallel configuration example. So I have here two diodes. Okay, one D1, the other one is D2 connected in this way. So find I1, I2, and ID2. Okay, so um, first I have to decide whether it's going to be on or off okay so this is 20 volts and both of these are in the opposite uh, are in the uh, positive direction of current flow so d2 and 3.3 .3 kilo ohms I'm sorry hold on so d2 d1 and d2 are, are assumed to be on okay so if it's on I have added here the um, annotation in the green font which is 0 0.7 volts so now another thing to look at is d2 and 3.3 .3 kilo ohm D2 and 3.3 .3 kilo ohm. Now, one end of the terminals are connected. The other end of the terminals are also connected. So, D2 and 3.3 .3 kilo ohms are actually in parallel. They're not in the same um, uh, orientation as in both are vertical, but actually they are in parallel because of the connection of the terminals. So, VR1 
because it is in parallel with the diode and the diode has locked it to be 0.7 volts because we have decided just now that it would be on so VR1 is also equals to 0.7 volts and Ohm's law uh, at 3.3 uh, kilo ohm gives me VR1 is equals to I1 R1 and I1 is going to be 0.7 divided by 3.3 kilo ohm which is 0.212 milliamp KVL this loop here 1 if I were to do KVL here okay I can find VR2 because I know 20 volts I know this is going to be 0 0.7 volts and this is 0 0.7 volts I can directly find VR2 if I do KVL at loop 1 so negative 20 plus 0 0.7 plus 0 0.7 plus VR2 is going to be equal to 0 so VR2 is 18.6 volts and once that I know that VR2 is um, 18.6 volts I can do Ohm's law here to find V is equal to IR to find I2 so VR2 is going to be equal to I2 times 5.6 kilo ohm. VR2 is the one that we found just now, 18.6. So I2 is 18.6 divided by 5.6 k, which is going to be equal to 3.32 milliamps. And if I want to find the car, the diode current here, I can just do KCL. Here, KCL, uh, where I2. Okay, if you look at I2, I2 is the loop at uh, the circuit. The before it branches out so it branches to I1 and ID2 so I2 is equals to I1 plus ID2 and ID2 rearranging it will give me I2 minus I1 and we've already found I2 and I1 just now so we get it to be at 3.11 milliamp so that's it so if you look at this example again something that is that has a non-linear equation you can still do simple KVL and Ohm's law because you have replaced the diode with simple equivalent models okay so this just before I go off this is just a picture of the whiteboard of all the examples that we've done okay thank you very much we'll go on to the next um, lecture which is rectifiers